here YouTube. In today's video we're going to go over clutch brakes and clutch adjustments. Now this is going to be a pretty tight confined area that we're working in. It's very dark under there. Hopefully I can get good footage of installing this. Uh, if not I apologize but I'll do my best to try to get this on film and you know if it looks like we're getting pretty decent footage then uh, I'll go ahead and cover the clutch adjustment as well. That's something I've been asked to do many times but it's kind of a difficult thing to try to record uh most times that i've tried to do it in the past i just kind of get frustrated trying to record it and i say screw it and get the job done move on to the next thing so hopefully this time uh we're getting some footage on that for you and uh hopefully it'll help you out anyway uh let's get to it these are clutch brakes what their job is is to stop the input shaft of the transmission from spinning so you can put it in gear on these large trucks, there's not synchros in the transmission. The gears need to be turning at the same speed to engage. So when you're stopped and your input shaft is spinning, there's a lot of mass and inertia inside that transmission. You need to be able to stop the transmission from spinning in order to put it in gear. Now this is a common failure that you see on clutch brakes. This whole assembly is engaged into the input shaft by these two little teeth. What happens is if you apply too much of a torque load to these these teeth will snap off and then they're no longer connected to the input shaft meaning that they will no longer work. If your clutch brake suddenly stops working you can remove the inspection cover and if this clutch brake spins freely without turning the input shaft this is your problem. I had a lot of grease and stuff packed around this. I think I've been over greasing the out bearing and I think that was part of the reason why we had this failure. It is also possible that I could have the put shaft seal leaking on the transmission but it appeared to be mostly just grease we cleaned it up i'm going to install this new clutch brake or be sure to check this next time we do a service on the truck and make sure that this has not all packed full of grease again now these are both two-piece clutch brakes if you have a if you need to remove a one-piece clutch brake meaning that there's not a split in them place to take them apart you have to literally cut this off it's a uh, rather labor intensive job and it's not very fun. Uh, generally what you do is you nibble away at this at a torch until you get it down close and then you split it the rest of the way using a chisel. It's not a very ideal thing to do but with, with this style you can drive this roll pin back out. Basically this has got kind of a Z notch here that, that's what mechanically holds it. And then there's a little roll pin that you drive in from the side here that you know keeps this located on here so that it doesn't come apart. Now there is a couple different types of two-piece clutch brakes. Uh, there's a style that's hinged on one end and then it has a button with a roll pin that presses down through the center. Uh, I do not like that style. Uh, I've seen them come apart too many times and basically the clutch brake just flies off the uh, input shaft going down the road and clutch brake stops working. You take the inspection cover off and there the clutch brake is laying on top of the inspection cover. So I do not suggest using that hinge type. Uh, there is also a hinge type that has a Allen set screw that comes in like this. Uh, that type is okay but I do feel that this is the best style of clutch brake. Uh, this is the, the Babcock two-piece clutch brake. Basically all you need to know when you order one of these is what size your input shaft is. Other than that, they're all the same. It's a very common part and uh, pretty easy to find. Now this particular one uh, seems how the tabs were broken off. Uh, you know, this thing just kind of kept wanting to roll around on me while I was trying to drive the pens out. Uh, it was being a pain in the ass, so uh, basically what I did is I just took a cheap Harbor Freight impact socket and I cut a groove in it so that I could basically stick it over here and then I just snapped that roll pin off so I could get the old one out. You can see the, the roll pin snapped off in there. And that's how I got this one out. But generally, uh, if it will cooperate, you can just drive these, these roll pins back out with a hammer and a punch. But this one wasn't wanting to cooperate, so that's the way I did it. And it actually worked quite well. Okay, you can see that I've got the, 
the clutch brake on the input shaft now. So the shiny thing there is the input shaft. Then right there we've got the clutch brake. You can see the roll pin there and the other roll pin there. We need to drive those two roll pins in to set this thing in place. And then that right there is our throw out bearing. And we're just get these uh, get these roll pins drove in here and uh, go from there. Okay, now you can see that we've got both of our roll pins installed. Now it's time to check the clutch adjustment. Now the spec on most Eaton clutches is between 490 thousandths clearance to 560 thousandths clearance between the clutch brake and the throwout bearing. Now 500 thousandths is a half inch. Most people don't have feeler gauges that big, but what they do have is a half inch drive extension. Now do be aware that even though it's a half inch drive extension, it might not actually measure a half an inch. This half inch extension measures 491 thousandths. So that puts us right on the bottom edge of our spec for our clutch adjustment. So we can see here, we've got a good eighth of an inch more clearance than we should, so we're gonna need to adjust this clutch. Now to do that, on this style clutch, we're gonna need to remove this bolt, take this pin out, and then we're gonna need to rotate this ring this way in order to move the throw out bearing closer to the transmission. Now the clutch does need to be depressed while we make this adjustment, seems how I'm in the shop by myself. I have taken a piece of wood, wedged it between the clutch pedal and my PTO switch here to keep the clutch pressed while I do this adjustment. Apologize for all the shaky camera here. It's just I can't really get the camera on a mount in a place where I can where you guys can see this. This also is a bit of a crude method. They do make a specialty tool for this. However, I don't have one. I don't want to get one because once I need to replace this clutch, I don't plan on using this style of clutch. I much prefer an Eaton Easy pedal, which has a button that you press in. Anyway, you guys get the idea. So now we've got it rotated around. We got this line back up here. We're going to go ahead and release the clutch now, recheck our clearances, and if it's good, we can put our lock tab back in. So we checked it and we were still out a little bit, so we went ahead and pushed the clutch back in, rotated a couple more lugs. We can now see that our half inch extension fits in here just like it should, meaning that we're, it's a little bit loose, so I'd say we're a little closer to 500 thousandths rather than 490 thousandths, so I'm pretty happy with that. We're gonna leave it there. Gonna go ahead and put our lock ring back in. See, we need to rotate just a little bit more to line that up. Oh, crap. Means I gotta push the fucking clutch back in. Okay. Go ahead and tighten that down. Then for our linkage adjustment, basically we're just going to want to make sure that we can engage the clutch brake. The clutch brake should engage about half an inch to an inch off of the floor. 
Now, if you have two people, what you're do, so you take a 10 thousandths feeler gauge and you slide that feeler gauge between the clutch brake and the throw out bearing and have them press the clutch pedal to half an inch off of the floor and you shouldn't be able to pull that feeler gauge back out. Now everyone always wants to get caught up on that you should have two inches of free play at the pedal and I'll show you why that's wrong. Okay. Here we've got the clutch pedal wedged all the way down after we've adjusted the clutch and our clutch brake's engaged. And you can see that the pedal is one inch off of the stop for the end of the travel of the clutch pedal. That means our clutch brake is one inch off of the floor. Spec, you know, somewhere about half an inch to an inch. That means our linkage is properly adjusted. If anything, it should be moved slightly closer to the floor, which would give us more free play at the pedal. Let me remove the of wood I've got wedging the clutch pedal here. Now we know that we've got proper bearing to brake clearance. Now we know that we have the proper clearance at the clutch itself. We know that the linkage is adjusted properly because the clutch brake engages at the proper place. And we're going to check the travel at the pedal. So you can see that our clutch pedal at a rest is basically nine inches off of the floor. Now when we take up the free play, we're at six and three quarters. So nine inches, eight inches, seven inches, three quarters. So we're two and a quarter inch free play at the pedal. So if we moved our linkage adjustment to put this at a half an inch off of the clut off of the pedal stop to the clutch brake engagement, that would give us about another half an inch. That would put us at three inches of pedal free travel. So that's why pedal free travel really doesn't mean anything. Now, once your clutch linkage is adjusted properly, you should never have to mess with it again. So it can be an indication of your clutch adjustment. As your clutch wears, you're going to lose free play on the clutch. So it seems how your linkage never changes. It is an indication when you need to do a clutch adjustment, but two inches of pedal travel does not mean everything. You know, you always hear your clutch should have two inches of free travel at the pedal, but really that's not the important thing. The important thing is the clearance from the clutch brake to the throw out bearing. And that's the measurement that you need to be concerned about. Once you've set up your clutch properly and you've set your linkage properly, you can use pedal free play as a reference, but pedal free play doesn't mean everything. You hear, hear a lot of people say, you know, you need to have two inches of pedal free play. If you don't have two inches of pedal free play or you have too much free play, your clutch needs to be adjusted. That's not necessarily true. You need to verify that your measurement between your clutch brake and your throw out bearing is correct. And that's the measurement that you need to worry about. Anyway, I hope I was able to get some good footage on this for you. If not, you know, I apologize. I'm sure it's probably going to be a little bit shaky while I was under the truck. It's just, it's very hard to try to record in that tight space and still try to work and move and be able to see what you're doing yourself and stuff like that. So hopefully I got some good footage for you and uh, I hope you guys will like, comment, subscribe down below. Thank you. Have a good day.